Welcome to Brawl Street to Britain, a UK Phillies show. And it is me, Dave Shaw. And it's great to be back. The season is just over, two weeks away. Cannot believe I'm saying it. I want it here now. I've reached a point where I'm like, okay, everyone's healthy. There's injuries going on to the teams around us. Can we just start the season now? Let, let's go. I'm ready. I'm pumped up. And I'm joined, as ever, by two very special guests. First of all, from PHLY Sports, Philly Sports, John Foley at 2008 Fails. How are you, John? I'm great. I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on. How Love is it. how is life? This is your first time in Clearwater, right? Working for so, yeah, it's, in the media. How How is this? It looks like you're living the dream out there. It's been wild. I really, really am living the dream. Yeah, I uh, have been down here several times as a fan, but th this is my first time uh, working. Um, but yeah, to be honest, it does not feel like work at all. I mean, it's just beautiful sunshine. Got away from the uh, northeast U.S. weather. Come down here, and um, it's it's beautiful. There's, there's not <laughs> there's not much <laughs> much other way to put it other than it's it's beautiful. You don't need to say no more, right? You know, the pictures speak for themselves, and and even the the views from the game when the game's on, the, the sun seems to always be shining. Everyone's always, always in t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> Everyone. Drinking some good drink, good food, watching the fills like the fanatics there doing his thing. You get you're visiting some amazing ballparks as well. I love. I really want to go out there next year to not only go to Clearwater but some of the other ballparks around that area because they, they look stunning. Any any favorites you've also visited so far? Yeah. So the other day we were in um, Bradenton, Florida, uh, to play the Pittsburgh Pirates, and they have a <laughs> just the, the most adorable little ballpark down there, like old timey, old fashioned, small. Everybody's basically just on bleachers. It looks like, you know, more like a high school stadium um, than than a professional baseball park, but in a good way. I mean that. I mean that in the best way possible. <laughs> it's just very homey and, and close, and uh, I, I think that might have been my my favorite so far. Oh man, I I want to get out of there. Like Spencer, for you, NBC Sports, Spencer McCurchy, everybody. How are you, Spencer? Good, my guy. It's so good to see you guys. Um, it's been great to see John down here as well. Um, finally getting to meet him in person after doing the first show down here. Um, it's been awesome, man. It's been. I think John just spoke, you know, everything into existence. I have one complaint though. Uh oh. The only complaint. The only complaint is the allergies are awful. I my pollen allergy is insane. It always is. It has been since I've been little. And it's, you know, it's on steroids down here, right? It is. Already, and it's only middle of March. I can only imagine it, it gets worse down there. It's crazy. Yeah, like my laptop screen the other day, we did a live show at NBC um, after the game on Saturday. And I opened up my laptop on Sunday and it was just yellow. But other than that, if that's the only complaint I can have, <laughs> it, it's, it's been great, man. We oh, man, it's oh, man. It's exactly. just meds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're battle, battle, battling through. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's been awesome. Um, coming down here for the last few years, it's every day. It's, you know, not to get weird, but it's a blessing, right? Like it's, I look at it as something that very lucky to do, very honored to do. Um, and just like the friendships that I've made down here with, with now John and, and some of these writers and I've made friends down here with some of the bars down here. And it's been great, man. It's, it, it always feels good to be back here and looking forward to the season start though. Uh, absolutely. Any highlights for you so far this spring? Any any ballparks that you've loved visiting so far? Yeah, last year, last year I went to uh, the TD ballpark um, in in uh, Dunedin, where the Blue Jays play. Um, went there last year. It was beautiful. I think John, John, I, I think you went there um, that first game of the year, right? And we were we were both there. Yeah, I've been to the the TD ballpark at, at least once, maybe a couple times. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. One of the <laughs> It's a nice ballpark on its own in terms of just, you know, very beautiful, uh, like all the, all of these parks. But I think the main benefit is it's just 10 minutes away from clear, from clear water. Right. Whereas, right. You know, I, I was not, a, I don't think I was fully aware how big Florida is. I mean, yeah. I've been to different parts, but like bouncing around it and driving in between uh, cities for these games, you start to realize, wow, this is, this is you know, some of these are poor Charlotte's like two and a half hours away with traffic. Putting in the miles, yeah. yeah. Putting in, putting in the miles, but uh, yeah, exactly. but, you know, it, it's all it's all beautiful, beautiful driving, right. very scenic. Right? Yeah, I have no, there. I have no sympathy for you guys. Like two and a half hours, like that's half the country for us yeah. over here. Like, yeah, fair enough. It's, uh, <laughs> we, we, we'll dive into all the latest from the Phillies camp from from Clearwater from both yourselves because the season <clears> is just over two weeks away. 
And even, uh, even not even that, the London series is just less than three months away. Cannot believe I'm saying that. John, Spencer, you're going to both be there as well. Cannot wait to see you guys right here in my backyard in, in June. Um, just quickly, some London series updates because uh, a few people are asking a few questions now on, on social media. Always happy to answer any questions. Please do reach out, guys. Um, Pass Young Avenue, the event, uh, they're all out. They're, they're, they're all ticketed. Uh, most of the tickets are free. Um, so get your, buy your tickets. Uh, the, the bus tour, the boat tour, the boat party, that's going to be incredible. That's running on the Thursday and Friday. Uh, 90-minute bus tour. You get some free drinks, get a goodie bag. It's all sponsored by True Travel. Thank you to them uh, who are linked with the Philly Sports Strips. Vince, you're the man. Um, then back to the three hour boat party, DJ, free drinks again. An amazing way to see London. If it's your first time in London, definitely check that out. And we're fellow Philly fans too. It's you, it's gonna be a riot. You guys know it, it's gonna be well worth doing. We're turning the Waterloo Arches into Reading Terminal, giving you the best of Philly food, drink, entertainment, uh, big screens, DJs, uh, cornhole games. <laughs> um, a cup, a what's it? Flip cup, flip cup, beer pong, you name it. Your tailgate games, two big tailgate parties happening there. But like in 2018 at Cleveland Street, we're shutting down Cleveland Street, the past young there, for a massive tailgate block party on the Sunday, running through the day to the night. If you haven't got tickets to the Sunday game, head down there and watch it there at the tailgate or go before the game, come down there after the game. Tickets are free for that as well. And the Battersea site as well. There's again going to be a massive tailgate party on the Monday. If you're hanging around London, not heading back yet, head down to Passion can keep the party going on Monday. Tickets for that are free as well. You need a ticket to get in. They are taking reservations. Ring up in advance as well. Um, but yeah, it is all go. It is all go. Tickets are selling really fast, especially for the bus tour and boat party. Uh, Reading Temple tickets are selling fast. You put some more on sale uh it's unbelievable i cannot believe the demand and the excitement around all these events um so any questions please guys keep reaching out london stadium has converted the locker rooms from the cubs and cars into the phillies and mets if you're in london and fancy doing a tour of the stadium you can go see the locker rooms all decked out in phillies and that that other team from new york um <laughs> And there are a couple of tickets left, uh, well, a few tickets left in our UK field section for the Saturday and Sunday at the ballpark. Uh, I can't believe I'm calling London Stadium at the ballpark. Incredible. Uh, and there are, uh, and guys, a massive thank you for everyone who's buying the merchandise, London Series UK Fields merchandise as well. Huge thank you. I'm loving seeing all your pictures of you guys repping uh, UK Fields uh, and the London Series merch. Again, it just blows my mind. It's like it's surreal. Uh, but thank you guys ever so much. And as the uh, the time gets near, we're going to be doing more and more build up to London series. Some more show. We've got special guests coming on. Uh, more vlogs are coming up and some exciting things have been planned. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes peeled to the socials and uh, more will be revealed. But very excited. John, Spencer, you guys are both coming to London series. I'll start with you, John. What are you looking forward to the most about coming to London and seeing the fills right here? I'm very excited about the Phils. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime experience. But what I, what I need to know, Dave, is it, are we going to be hanging out with you and Chase Sutley at, at the clubs after the games? What's the situation there? Have you been in touch with Chase? Well, <laughs> have you texted him? All right, you got to be exclusive here. You got you know, the Fanatics going to be at Passion Young, possibly on the Friday night, probably Thursday around that time. J Roll's in town. Cole Hamels is in town. Ryan Howard's in town. Hey, look. Just come down to Passion and can see who rolls in. It's going to be – well, we can hang out for some beers afterwards. Absolutely. It's, oh, yeah. I, it's, going to be, it's going to be a chaotic, crazy weekend. I'm, I'm going to try and take it all in the best I can. But, oh, man, I, I don't think I'm mentally prepared for this, this weekend yet. I think it's just going to be a whirlwind. But I'm all here for it, and I'm going to embrace, embrace the chaos. Um, Spencer, what about you? Coming down with NBC, first time to London? First time to London, yeah. I do, to be honest, I've never been outside of the United States. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Got the passport all ready to rock now. So yes. um, really looking forward. Yeah, that was like step one. As soon as I was told that we're going, I was like, all right, that's the first thing that we need to accomplish. 
Um, but yeah, man, looking forward to it. I think besides the game, like John just said, I think hanging out with both of you guys, post-game, pre-game, whatever, but I think just appreciating how much work you're putting into this, truthfully. Like, the amount of stuff, the videos that you've made, everything you just talked about right there, it's going to be such a cool experience. And it's something that, like, I don't think, like like John just said, it's it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, right? It's something that we'll never get to experience, hopefully eventually down the road maybe again. But I think when we're there, we're going to really appreciate just how much work you put into it, how much effort you put, in, put it into this. And I think everyone, not even just us, I think everyone will appreciate it. And I, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Ah, oh, thanks, man. And I gotta say, you know, not just myself, but there's a, a massive operation, uh, especially down at Pash Young, JP Tetty, um, Gary, Daniel, uh, Vince, True Sport Travel, who are sponsoring the the boat and, and bus tours. There's a lot of people working behind the scenes, really, really hard to to make this happen. So yeah, I'm you know pushing it, advertising it, or doing the promo. Uh, having a lot to do with it as well, but there's a there's a big big team going on making this all possible, and it it's just about the experience for for everybody coming over, and it's not just from America, you know, it's from all over the country here, all over the UK, uh, from all over Europe. Like when I was doing the, the the Google Map thing, gauging where fans are from from around the world, the amount of people that are in Europe, uh, and not just from Philly, but America, like Texas, Florida, Kansas, that are coming over to London for this experience. It's just it's a truly international event and you're not to be meeting fans philly fans from from the uk all over europe like there's, there's a lot of german swedish so many swedish fans <laughs> coming over belgium you know uh, italy a lot of italians slovakia uh, croatia turkey there are fans at greece can't forget greece I, somebody will uh, pick me out on that <laughs> one but spain portugal yeah there's fans coming from all over europe it's going to be a real international event phil and our main goal is to make this the best the best event you've ever been to. You know, 2018 when the Eagles came over, that was incredible. And it felt like Philly had invaded London. We're going bigger. You know, it was just one past Young site back then. There's now three, as well as that, you've got the MLB events at Trafalgar Square, which are going to be going on. A lot's happening around the stadium itself. I just, I'm just praying for the weather, <laughs> just, just to stay dry. <laughs> um that's, that's all i want it, sunny is a bonus hot's a bonus last year was scorching it was really hot i just want the rain to stay away i'm happy if it's dry but it it's it's gonna be once in a lifetime it's gonna be an incredible experience and i just can't wait to see you guys to see everybody coming over and everybody mixing you know we're gonna bring philly to the we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring philly to london but also london to you guys as well and philly just the big the big mashup the big crossover and london won't know what hit it i don't think london's ready for this you know <laughs> philly's coming to london and it's going to be incredible and obviously the mets are going to bring a big fan base over the seven line army new york they've got their side you know i i, I am looking forward to it it's gonna be a real rivalry like cubs and cards it was it was good it was a good good weekend i had a great time met so many amazing people. The thing is that you'll find as well is, is that it's it's fans from all, all teams are repped. You know, I saw and met a fan and managed to have my, it was my aim to have a picture of every single fan from every single team. And I crossed it off more because there was Expos and there was tons of people, players from Europe, European teams uh, that were wearing their jerseys. And that was so cool to see that people think, you know, and some people have the impression, oh, it's just America's sport, and you know, and, it, and it's not. The the the, the Europe is it's a massive fan base in Europe. It's unbelievable, and the amount of teams in Europe, and really good teams in Europe. And one thing that's the same throughout baseball in America, South America, Central America, Europe, is that the passion for the sport is exactly the same. The enthusiasm, the just just bit, baseball has that unique way of bringing people together like everyone's mindsets are the same you know it, it's just a great sport enjoyed by all and i can't wait to have everybody here and hopefully gain a lot of new fans as well like there's been a lot of people walking by passion going what is going on there hopefully coming through the doors and going damn this is this is pretty cool and watching a bit of the game getting a feel for the philly culture the philly food the drink the people and just we're the best fan base in the world and they're going to find that out they're going to find that out in june so so it's incredible, Dave. It's you know, it just it, it gives you chills. Just a truly global community all coming together for this for this big event. Um, you know, it's it's so fun 
just in South Philly being a part of something bigger than yourself. And then to really have, you know, folks coming in from all the countries you listed, that's, it's, it's just wild. And it's a, it's a celebration of the sport and of community and of fandom and uh, it wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, man, I, I need to get myself, right, feet back on the ground. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the now. Let's talk about spring training because you're both there in clear water. You're both seeing inside the camp. Like I said at the start, I want the season to start now. I'm, you know, Garrett Cole is the engine for the Yankees. Judge is having an MRI scan. And for once, the field, and touch wood, Marsh is nearing return. He's meant to be returning this week. Back to playing action. We have a relative, well, we're, we're healthy. And I can't remember the last time we went into to a season. And again, touch wood, <laughs> treading lightly here, but the Phils have a healthy roster. No, like last year we had Suarez didn't even get going till late in spring. Soto had visa issues. Harper, of course, was injured. Dominguez had just come out for a year out and, and was, took a while to get going. This year, we're like, we're pretty much firing in all cylinders. The, the, the main people you expect are having the springs you expect. The hitting, I'm not worried about. You know, Schwarber one for 20, whatever. I, I'm, I'm sure on the first day, he's going to hit a new kid to the stands and his spring training stats are all forgotten about. It's what Schwarber does, right? But, you know, Harper's looking good. We've got We've got an actual first baseman, you know, and probably the best first baseman defensively the Phils have had in since when? Years? <laughs> like, I couldn't think. Like, we have a legit possible gold glove candidate there at first base. Already, that's a massive upgrade to where we started last year. You know, we had a terrible start. You know, we have players away in the World, uh, the World Baseball Classic, which is fantastic. But, it, you know, it was a, it was a very stagnated start. We weren't, we weren't, you know, we didn't have the build-up we wanted. This time... And uh, the vibes I'm getting, all about the vibes, is that it feels like business. You know, this is it's business time now. It's the same group. We go again. For you two, John, first, is that is that the vibe you're getting from the camp when you're seeing these players? You know, pitchers are getting more innings than usual. You know, usually it would be one inning, two innings out. You know, Wheeler, the, the splitter. You know, Wheeler looks awesome this spring. Ranger Suarez looks great. The bullpen, the, the regulars are looking great. Is it? Is it does it have a... Let you know. Let's get down to business. You know, let's really. It's 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 crunch time this year. Is that the vibe you guys are getting, John? Yeah, Dave. The, I, I think you nailed it a hundred percent. Just the business-like approach, the professionalism. <clears throat> you know, um, Will Merrifield had an interesting quote when he when he joined the club, and it was basically about how, you know, he's joining a, a group of guys, a group of the core stars who have who have done the individual things. You know, they've they've got a lot of individual claim. They've put up great numbers. They've earned big contracts. And there's only one thing left for them to do is to go get that ring. And, uh, you know, he said it's it's sort of palpable in the clubhouse, on the field, that this is this is the goal. Everybody has that in mind. You know, and, of course, it's the goal every year. But I don't know if in previous Philly seasons there was there was really quite, quite the same attitude. Like, there's <laughs> there's nothing they can do. Other than world of when bring it all home, that right. that wouldn't be a disappointment. That's that's the only goal in mind. Nobody's gonna be happy just to make the playoffs. Uh, nobody's just celebrating, you know, like in Houston when when um, you know they clinched the first playoff berth a couple of years ago in in, in forever. Uh, this year, it's you know it's very much a mindset. We're here. We got to do what we need to do and uh, go out and get those those rings. Yeah, and Spencer, for you as well, like, I haven't seen many errors from the team. Defensively, we've looked pretty sound, especially from the regulars. Um, it just feels like I'm getting good vibes off this team. Like, I'm really, you know, when we did the Wheeler contract extension came, I was talking myself into 95-plus wins. I'm reining myself in slightly, but at the same time, like, the start we had last year really hindered us from touching 95 wins last year. We're going into this season with better depth. I think the bullpen's stronger, healthy. Rotation, I think, is one of the best in the National League. Like, am I am I slightly like delusional thinking 95-plus wins is possible? I, I know, by the way, if everyone jumps on, I did tweet that 95 <laughs> wins and we'll challenge the Braves. I'm reining myself in on that ever so slightly. But 95 wins plus, that's, that's doable, right? Absolutely. I think, you know, and it's come down the last few years, it's been that slow start. And... 
it, we, we talked about this in the Philly Stock podcast uh, a few few episodes ago. It's kind of wild to think that this is Bryce Harper's first full spring training since becoming a Philly, right? He signed yeah. late February in 2019. Then 2020 was the COVID lockdown, the, the year. 2021 was the the lockdown, right? Or yeah. the, uh, the strike. 2022 was hurt. 2023 was hurt. Now here in 2024, we finally see a full Bryce Harper in spring training. And that's astonishing. And I think... You want to talk about the vibes, Dave. It's, I think, I think, John, you can attest to this. Just being in the locker room, it's, you're talking to some of these guys, and it's like, wow, yeah, it's, it seems like nothing's changed. It's almost like a reunion, right? Where it's like, okay, we took a few few months off, and now we're back together. And I think that's going to play a huge dividend in this team starting off hot, especially if you can come out and beat the Braves in the first three games oh, at yeah. home and just set the tone right away, right? Set that tone of like, hey, this is, we're not going to just lay over and finish second again. And you guys win 110 games and whatever. I think this is a that, that first three games of the season back at CBP, just you know giving them a reminder that hey, the last two years in the playoffs we're still here, but this we're coming for that division title. And I think 95 wins would be you know a far stretch. And I think Rob Thompson knows that, right? Rob Thompson I think has come out and said multiple times that he's recognized the slow starts, but it's because of these guys not having. We had the World Baseball Classic last year where these guys didn't get that full spring training with the team. You brought in Trey, you brought in Taiwan Walker, all these guys that are kind of new. And everyone was kind of upset back at home, right? I think, John, you can attest too that they were like, oh, we're running back. Like, we need to improve, we need to improve. But it's like, no, I think we're there. We're, we're The last two years, we've been a few wins short. We needed to win a few more games in October, early November, and we would have been in the World Series, you know, possibly with a, two rings. So I think... That is motivation for this team, and they and they've been asked so many times over the last three or four weeks. Oh, you know, like, are you going to use motivation from last year? I think they're tired of answering those questions, and I think we're going to see you come out in the field this year. I I love it the fact that we're starting against the Braves. I think this is the perfect yeah. opening series because it's straight into. Like, if it was the Royals or the or the, even starting against the Reds, it's slightly, well, we should win that series. It's an easy start. This is straight into intensity. You know, Citizens Bank Park is going to be electric, as it was, I think, for the playoffs. You know, Strider's coming back. Uh, yeah. there, there, there's there's blood between these two teams, you know, and it's, it, it's personal. You know, being the Braves, it would make a big statement. You're right. And that, what way to start the season if we can take this, the opening series against the Braves? And then we've got the Reds and then the Nationals. It's a nice it's, it's a nice way to start the season on a high it will get you know it will be like yeah it, let's make a statement let's because i think people are sleeping on us slightly as well people think people people think we've, we've regressed like I, I i'm constantly fighting the battle of we are a better team than what started last year and if we can get and there's going to be a little bit of regression from some players but i think the improvements from others will, will outweigh that um let's go into an interesting debate that's been happening all spring Rojas and Pache, uh, the quotes I've heard from Topper recently, possibly leaning towards Rojas may start the season in AAA. His fundamentals, uh, I don't know, he's because he's adjusted his swing, right? It, it's they're trying to get him to have more contact, and from what I'm getting from Topper is is that his fundamentals are not quite not quite there yet. He needs regular batting. AAA would help. It, it, John, is that the way you see it? Do you see Rojas? Uh, as you see, sorry, Pache. Uh, who's had it? Is that a good spring? Both, by the way, both defensively excellent. And I'm not, I'm not Team Pache or Team Rojas, as people seem to on social media. Both these players are going to play a big impact for the Bills this year. I firmly believe that. And if Rojas starts in AAA, I think that's a benefit. He's getting regular at bats because when he gets locked in with his defensive skills as well, damn, you know what a player we have there. So I'm, I'm not too worried about if he does go to AAA. I'm neither or. I just want them both to be great, and I think they both could be great. But do you do you see Rojas possibly then dropping down to AAA and Pache getting start to start the season? I think I think it's entirely possible, Dave. Um, you know, and, and there was as early as the winter meetings. Um, you know, Dave Dombrowski was talking about how they they want Rojas to earn the job and really show that he's developed a, at the plate. He's put in a ton of work over the off season. Um, you know, Rob Thompson called it uh, a little bit of an overhaul, I think was the phrase, when they talked about what they were doing with his, his swing, what they were working on. So all that said, if you're doing sort of an overhaul, you you expect there, there to be some bumps in the road. It's going to take him some at-bats to get really where he wants to be. So the question really becomes, 
can you live with limited production out of your your nine hole hitter and you know world class defense while while that bat develops or do you want him down in triple a which gives you the benefit of having an extra extra roster spot pache and i i don't think it's really fair for folks to to pit the two of them against each other they're both incredibly Agreed. talented players um they do overlap a little bit on their on the roles um pache very gifted defensively he's he's not quite rojas lover because bef but before rojas showed up and you know really uh amazed everyone with his defense people were pretty impressed with with pache's defense too and pache may be a little bit ahead of him offensively now pache's a guy uh, you know former you know really top highly regarded prospect um that you know you know you know he has that talent there not just in the field but but with the bat um Everyone feels good about Rojas's ultimate potential with the bat, but it's really just a question of is he ready, um, and how much do you value his defense and when he, and when he gives you in center field um, over some shortcomings at the plate that he needs to work on, and then you, see, you have to factor into it. <clears throat> you have to take into account: do you think he will get the sort of reps at the plate necessary at AAA, or do you think he needs to face major league? major league pitching to get it done so i have heard that you know early on it was like he has to win the job then spring training started and it, you started to get the feel that well as long as he shows you something like he doesn't have to do a whole lot to really win that job but you know he's his batting average is in the 100s if he if he truly had to win it he hasn't hasn't really done that friends it isn't i find it quite a luxury that pache is it's a nice backup to have isn't it you know it's before he got injured, he was really hot, you know, and that injury happened at the worst time last year for Pache because he was starting to show the player that the the, the, the stats had sort of when he was a prospect we were pointing to, you know, this guy's good, you know, he was he was highly rated for a reason. The injury, I feel, really knocked him off his stride and I'm really glad and, and again, touch word that he can keep having a healthy spring because, again, I feel when I'm watching, I'm starting to feel like, he, there's something about there's something about Pache, and it's it's quite it's a good thing to have. We've got two very good defensive, young, speedy defenders who just the bat the bat side of it will come. Like I'm quite excited to have these two platoon at the moment. Obviously, in the longevity of it, it can't continue. But Pache is not a bad backup to have. What if Rojas does has to go down to figure it out? He's not, and. That's what we were saying. I think Rob Thompson has one of the hardest decisions that he's had to make in a long time, right? Because it's it's do you want? Because I I can't remember offhand. I don't know if Pasha. I know his options are are kind of limited too. So if you send him yeah, down he's there, out. yeah, exactly. So then Pasha and Cave no options. Yeah, so. exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah, you you throw him down there already, and you option him down there, and then he gets through waivers, and I don't think we'll see him back in Philly's no. uniform. So it's it's such a tough decision, and I think that I think that decision alone will kind of pan out the way it should be and I'm not against Roas and that's the thing both of them are in such good spirits I've talked to both of them even just like not even in the locker room kind of outside on the, on the practice fields and they've both been happy-go-lucky just talking saying hi to everybody you know it's this is not not playing in their head but it is it's a luxury to have someone like Christian Pache and especially for someone that came in you know we were down in Texas and for opening day last year and I was, and I was like oh yeah here's Christian Pache I remember Diego introduced me to him and I was like oh wow yeah I can't believe we have this guy but he just got thrown into the fire right away started the season hot and then had that injury so I think the way his spring has been playing right now he's 294 you know I think he has five hits and 17 at bats something along those lines um I'm liking where we're seeing but yeah. that being said throwing Whit Merrifield into this conversation too has been super interesting right that was coming yeah <laughs> uh, yeah but not to not to lead on it's just I think that is something that it's going to have to come in play, especially come opening day. If Brandon Marsh isn't ready, then we'll get a we'll get some interesting topics. So, and, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. And this is it leads me into again why we're in such a better place than we were this time last year because Whit Merrifield, I think, is a is an excellent under under the radar signing from a lot of people. So again, social media from fans from the team, Whit Merrifield, what's he going to bring to you? Who you know, he's he's not an everyday player. Well. Whit Merrifield's stats before he got injured were one of the best in baseball. Contact, fantastic. Clutch player. The injury completely threw his season last season. He came back. He wasn't quite the same. A bit like Pache. The injury just really derailed his season, and he wasn't the same player. And his stats 
post injury to pre injury were, were were big splits, which then sort of skew whiffed his season splits. But Witt already in spring, like Christian Pache, he's had a good spring. The signs are again are really encouraging. What a backup to have. <laughs> again, depth. We've actually got good bench depth. He's not a bad defender either, by the way. But from going last season, going with March, Castellano, Schwarber in the outfield, we've now got Pache Rojas, March, Merrifield, Castellanos can be rested. What <laughs> a bit of a luxury of sorts, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, it's so no, nice to have John Whit Merrifield for those that maybe don't know him, you know, who haven't followed baseball that closely or fairly new to the field, new to baseball, don't know Whit Merrifield. What exactly is is Whit going to bring to to this team? You know, it's it's tough to discuss with, with Merrifield without like busting out the cliches, right? But it, it's it's really describes him well. He's just he's one of those sort of glue guys, you know. Um, He's, you know, not a superstar. The team has superstars. The team has this mm-hmm. young and, and they'll come. But what you need with championship teams, you see it over and over. What they have are sort of these these guys that give you versatility, depth, professional at bats. Again, another cliche, but just a, a professional hitter um, knows what he knows what he's doing. You can you can play him in the infield. You can play him in the outfield. I mean, it's a. Uh, Again, it it just feels like one of those moves that that championship teams make. You're not you're not going to toy with with the chemistry of the stars. You've got a lot of young talent to be excited about. So it makes perfect sense that the, that they're probably I guess their their biggest move other than the extensions uh, of Nolan Wheeler is is mm. to bring in a guy who, you know, he's there if if somebody goes down in position, then then you've got with it to handle that. If um, you know a, a legitimate hitter off the bench on on days when he doesn't start, he's he's kind of exactly what they needed. Um, so very very happy that he's here. And it was a good deal as well. You know, it was a, it was a, yeah. it was a good deal. Again, the front office have done it again, and people crying out for this big move. But offensively, we should have enough as it is. We have to, like you just said, we have the stars. And on their day, one to nine, the front one to nine is just again one of the best in the National League, if not the best in baseball. When they're all firing, yes, we need Casty to maintain it, Turner to start hotter, but of course, Spencer. Spencer trade deadline as well. You know, which is some makes you feel with the trade line that the fields, the fields. I think the fields are done. I don't think we'll see a Snell. I don't think we'll see a Montgomery. And looking at the rotation, Spencer, do you think we need him? Like. I like Wheeler, Nona Suarez, Walker, Sanchez. If Sanchez is the the pitcher he was last year, what a what a number five to have, and I think he will be. The signs again are encouraging. Walker, let's see how he keeps going through spring. He's a late starter. Nola, we we, we all know what we get from Nola, and, and hopefully more consistency this year. The improvements he made at the back end of last year was really encouraging. You know, he was a different player mid August onwards once he had made the adjustment. Wheeler is <laughs> Wheeler's just looking in fine form and Suarez as well. Do, do we do we need Snell and, and Montgomery? Would is it worth waiting to the trade deadline to see see what we need then? I, I agree. Yeah, we definitely I don't think we need any of them. And I I think everything that we're hearing we're not gonna we're not in play for either one of them unless this number drastically comes down. Mm. Um I think I know I've been kind of yelled at for this. I think it's one of the best rotations in baseball. Um, right. I know. I know. The only injury front that we've kind of worried about was Taiwan Walker. He had that little bit of stretch there where he left the team for personal reasons, then came back and just had some spring training soreness. Um, but he looked he looked solid in his first start on Saturday. Um, I'm excited to see what Taiwan Walker does. I mean, what he was fourth in the league uh, in wins last year. Yeah. Um, a little inconsistent, but I think, you know, again, coming out, he was also in the World Baseball Classic, didn't get a full time, you know, with this team, then came back this year, um, ready to rock. I think, and then I was, I was asked, or the, the whole NBC crew was asked the other day of who was going to be like your biggest surprise of the year. My answer is Christopher Sanchez. I think we're going to see this kid, the confidence level skyrocket with Christopher Sanchez. I think we could see him, you know, low three RA hopefully have 10 to 15 wins it, it it's going to be awesome to see christopher sanchez um, explode into a young superstar and have the confidence continue to build so yeah i'm i don't think we need any of those guys and i know everyone's kind of upset at the deadline last year um the Phillies stayed kind of quiet but 
depending on where we're at, you know, and I'm excited to see Turnbull too, right? We have some of these yeah, guys, true. some of these long guys that can fill that role if, if one of these guys go down, knock on wood. So I'll, I'll give you another name. What, what about Mick Abel, Spence? Wow. I'll tell you what. Wow. He'll be out there. I'll tell you what, so, John. He, I, I, last night was awesome to see Mick, and I think that confidence is going to continue. So we asked them after the game, and I was like, you know, you struck out Juan Soto in four pitches. That has to build the confidence, right? And he was like, of course. Like, it's going to continue to build. I'm, I'm so excited to see him in this prospect game as well. Um, you know, no Andrew. We'll hopefully see Painter maybe at the end of this season. I doubt it, but 2025 should be exciting. But Mick could be a name that we could definitely see come up. If, if this, you know, he, his, he mostly all spring, he's been talking about how he wanted to lower the walk rate, right? His, his walks per nine was pretty high last year in the double A and triple A um, game. So that's what he's been focused on a lot. And him and Caleb Cotham have been working dang there every day um, out on those side fields and adjusting grips on slider grips and, and all that. So, I'm looking forward to what's, what we can see with Mick, but in terms of this rotation right now, I think we're in good shape. And I agree. And on the same as Whit Merrifield, Turnbull, again, is it's a good depth piece. Like, I, I really like the – people weren't, like, overjoyed by it. Okay, right, he's not the superstar, but what he gives you – and, again, an improvement from this time last year is we've got rotation depth. Like, we had no rotation depth last year at all, really. Uh, and then Lorenzen came in and stayed the ship for a, a few a no hit. It was incredible, obviously, but then sort of tailed away after that. But Turnbull's a very, I, I like Turnbull. I like the, the signing and Mick Abel could, could come from nowhere. Again, it's just, it's nice to have, we're going into a season with, with depth, depth options, you know? Yeah. I think the I think the people who are complaining are, are not really used to a team that's mostly complete. Well, around this is this is a team yeah. that was good enough to win the World Series last year. Probably the, the year before they were in the World Series, they were up. So it, it's a different place than you know these years when you've really needed to make a big free agent splash when you're signing somebody like Bryce Harper or Trey Turner. Um, this is you know there's 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 not a lot of room for more stars out there. Like <laughs> you have your really guys, is. so. These death moves. And, this and is, everyone, this is what they need. Everyone seems happy as well. Like Dave Dombrowski seems happy. Topper seems like the vibe. I say the, the vibes are good with everybody from top, top to bottom. They, they seem to be set and this is what we got. And they keep saying this is what we've got. We're going to run it back. Quickly on Griff and Macedo, there was talk uh, Griff's going to work on well, the bullpen. They're going to move into a, a bullpen option. Spencer, you like this move? Good, good move for Griff because it seems like they're not, they weren't too sure what to do with him. Now they've decided again he could play a part this season. And Macedo, who who I know Top is very, very high on. Yeah, it was kind of. I think John, we were both in there when when Rob announced that, and it kind of was. It was almost a little shocking to hear it, but hmm. I know Griff's been working on so much stuff, and I know you know he's been working on his grip the entire time with Caleb Cotham. And I don't know if, it, if the pressure is getting to Griff McGarry in terms of, all right, you, you're kind of that third guy behind Painter and Abel. Um, and now he, he struggled last year. But I think the way he's come back this year, working with Caleb, um, our pitching coach, it's, it's been good to see. I know he's adjusting grips. Um, that was a big story in, in the spring training so far. Um, I think, you know, it, the confidence could be there now with the bullpen. I think it's going to be less pressure off him a little bit. Um, and that's really what we need him because I don't think we'd ever see him well, at least not in the next few years, in a starting rotation spot for the Phillies, right? But now that we locked up Nola, now we locked up Wheeler, Rangers there that will get a contract soon. Um, Walker's still here for three more years. You know, there was not a spot that, uh, that you know, Griff McGarry could fill in the rotation. Bullpen-wise now, here we go, right? This He could be that long guy. Heck, he could even turn into, not saying it, that this is exactly what it's going to be, but he could turn into an Orion Kirkring, right? Where he comes in for an inning or two and shuts you down with his fastball and the slider, which has been nasty lately. So I'm excited to see. I think we did ask John, you can speak more on it. We did ask Rob if, you know, if there was going to be a move back to the starting, you know, like a rotation spot. And he said that's still up in the air. So I'm excited to see what he has. And uh, yeah, I think this is a huge confidence builder for Griff McGay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, you're you're in a place where um, you have the luxury of, you don't you're not you have Griff McGarry, but you're not depending on Griff McGarry to come in. Like a lot of a lot of these teams around the league, a guy like that, you might have to just, all right, he doesn't seem quite ready, but we're going to throw him out there and hope for the best because because we need someone. Phillies Phillies are in a great spot. You can uh, let him take his time, 
see what he develops into. And yeah, uh, Spencer, like you said, asked about, you know, is this permanent? Rob Thompson says, well, you know, we sort of think so, but if he's, he's there and he's, and he's dominating and pitching well, and we're, and you start stretching back out and he's still doing it, then maybe he's, he's back under star consideration. And then, and then you have the, the luxury question of, of where does he fit? Because you already have yeah. all your, all your starter set up plus death. So again, just really in a different position than the previous years and previous Phillies teams where, um, you know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have conversations like this where there are just too many, too many players and not enough spots. And Dave, I know, you know, early in the show, you were talking about just, just how many games can they win? You know, I, I think the numbers are like from June on, they were at a 100 win pace from like June. <laughs> And and that's even before. So the I think the Turner ovation was August fourth. So you didn't even yeah. really have Turner yet. Um, Bryce Harper didn't start hitting home runs until August. He came he came back earlier than that, but he wasn't really himself until August. So so I look at it and, and say you played at a hundred win pace for most of the year. Um, you know, if if all goes well, you, you've got these guys that you didn't have um, early on as part of that 100 win pace. I think it's entirely entirely possible you could be looking at 95, 100. You've got the rotation that can let you go on these long runs, where you know if they all start clicking at the same time, there's there's no obvious glaring weakness that says, well, of course you're going to lose this game. No, if if they play up to their potential, they can get it done. And what more can you really ask? If if, if the stars hit like they yep. they have in the past, if the pitchers do with the track re- records or their their talent, well, let them. The, the talent is absolutely there for this to be a World Series championship team. And how many in how many years as a Phillies fan can you take a look at the roster and say? <laughs> You know, we're not looking for a miracle. We just need we need these guys to do what they've they've done historically, and you're right there. You're right in the mix, and the playoffs can be a little bit of a crapshoot. But uh, you get there enough times, you get there consistently, like they have the past couple of years, and sooner sooner or later you're gonna break through. Yeah, we have that. You know, getting there, we have that experience now. We have two year two years of hurt, which is what you learn from the most, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, you learn more in losses and. The hurt than anything else. It's just, I mean, life really it doesn't get too deep, but it's just, you know, we, they've, they've got it. They've got that experience. Again, another plus from this time last year, Kirkring, full season of Orion Kirkring, you know. And I, you know, I'm not expecting Kirkring to be lights out all year. He's still, again, another really young pitcher. He's going to have games where it just it goes wrong. And that's what, again, part of the development of Orion Kirkring, but also he's going to give us so much more that we didn't have last season. Um, quickly on the bullpen, guys. Bullpen, um, not really getting that many spots up for grabs. Is there anybody who you can see making a surprise appearance to start the season? The bullpen, a, a, a Connor Brogdon or anyone like that? Spencer? Yeah, I don't know. Connor, Connor's interesting, right? I, I, we haven't seen the Connor Brogdon that was in the 22 playoffs since then, right? Mm. Even in the spring so far, He's struggled. The, the fastball command's been been struggling. His fastball's been off um, speed-wise. It's, it's dropped to like 94, 95 when in the playoffs, you know, it was 96, 97. Um, I don't know. The, I think, I still think, I don't know if this is necessarily a surprise in the bullpen. I think we will see Spencer Turnbull uh, in the bullpen as kind of that long guy. Um, but I'm really excited for Jeff Hoff, Jeff Hoffman this year. Right? Oh, um, how can I forget? Yes, it's he's gonna. I think we could even see Jeff Hoffman close out some games come this season. Um, I still don't think we'll have you know a strict closer, which you know some people don't like, and we'll we'll figure that out when the time comes. But I think we do see Jeff Hoffman, you know, kind of continue that rise that he had in the second half of the season and in the playoffs last year, where the confidence in every Phillies fan, including myself was there every time Jeff Hoffman came in the game, right? It was like, okay, we're, we're mm-hmm. okay. But in the beginning of the season, I was like, all right, who is this guy? You know, and it was kind of like, <laughs> right, what, 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 yeah, like, yeah, I mean, prior to last season, his numbers were sort of horrific. So exactly. there was no reason to have the, the expectations that Jeff Hoffman would do what he did. But exactly. it doesn't sound like it was a fluke. I and mean, it doesn't look like it was a fluke. Like the eye test, like it looks like he's just figured something out now. And hopefully he can really be a high leverage uh, arm uh, right in his arm, so we're, they, they we're can, yeah, they do a lot of different directions. You just got so many talented guys out there in the bullpen. Um, 
you know, if if there is, if you have to nitpick and you have to find something, you're like, okay, well, who's that ninth inning guy? If you're a believer that the ninth inning is, mm. is special and you really want somebody with closer experience and just to be the guy, um, you know, it, it, that that person has yet to emerge. But there's so many, there's so many of them that could be, um, you know, just a lot of, just a ton of big arms. Um, you've got, you've got Alvarado, Dominguez, uh, yeah, Hoffman, who we just discussed, Kirkering, uh, you know, they lost they lost Kimbrel, who, despite how we all feel about him now, really gave them a lot of good innings over the course of the, the regular season. So that has to be picked up. That puts some pressure on Kirkering. You know, in offseason discussions, when I when I try to look at the roster and see a place where they might want to upgrade um, and spend some cash, like if you really want to go all in, I was thinking they might go for a reliever just because. As yeah. great as the bullpen is, if you if you just plug somebody in and said, okay, now the ninth inning's locked down, now you've got that great collection of arms, just trying to manage, you know, the the sixth or eighth. That's that's incredible. But they're still in a good place, even without that addition. You've you've got so many so many options. Somebody will probably emerge and be dominating, or at least two guys, a left hander and right hander, will emerge, and you'll really feel pretty good about your chances when when the Phillies are up late in the game. So we'll see. I'm excited. Like we we had Sanchez emerge last year, Hoffman emerge last year. I'm looking at the roster, going, well, I wonder who this year's like surprise emerges could be. It's, it's one thing I love. Uh, quickly, then, very quickly, two more things. What name me? Give me one thing that you're really looking forward to this season more than anything else. For me, it's Bryce Harper at first all year because I think he could be a genuine Gold Glove contender. And a, again, touch wood, a healthy Harper all year. I think he could be very much an MVP tear as well. Uh, Spencer, one thing you're really looking forward to the most this year? I'll give you two, and it's just the middle infield. I think we're going to see Trey Turner be an MVP candidate this season. I think we'll see him try to go 30 to 40 stolen bases. He was 30 for 30 last year, and you know, and stolen bases didn't get caught into the playoffs. I think Trey will be back to MVP form. I don't think we'll have to worry about um, you know his struggles again and giving another standing ovation. And then you look at Bryson Stott. There's a chance that Bryson Stott could win a gold glove and a possible batting title this coming season. I'm super excited for Bryson Stott this coming season. I, I hope, I think we're going to see Bryson, you know, hit that 300, 315 mark in the batting average. Um, and then while also performing an unreal gold glove uh, season uh, and defensively. So I think the two middle infield guys are the most exciting part of the entire season. Um, just them clicking the relationship that they've had and kind of gathered together too has been special to watch uh, the spring so far. So yeah. excited for both of them uh, to have big seasons. Yeah, oh, it's, it's hard to just pick one or two because, I mean, you, you look at this team and, you know, if, if we're talking defense, it's been transformed. This is a team, you know, everybody was clowning on their defense yep. not too long ago. And now you look around and say, well, did that you look gold, gold glove caliber over that position. You look gold glove, glove caliber at this position. What? How did this even happen? Um, <laughs> you know, and especially like right up the, if you want to be strong up the middle defensively, you got real Mudo. You've got Stott and Turner, as Spencer just discussed, and then the center, whether it's Rojas or, or Pache or Marsh, um, yeah, yeah. anyone who's out there on a given day, you feel good about their their defense as well. So, And then even, even think, your two pitchers, right, with Zach Wheeler and Ranger Suarez, too, yeah, straight up yeah. the middle, too, that both of them have a chance to win the gold glove as well. Exactly. All of a sudden, they're they're really, it feels like a much more well-rounded team. It's not a what, ball go boom or whatever like we used to talk about. It's just like, forget about it. Let's just head our way to victory. They're going to do that on occasions. They're going to do that on some nights. Other nights, it might be pitching in defense. This is this is a complete team. So that's that's exciting. It should be, it should be exciting for any Phillies fan. And I think that's a huge credit to Bobby Dickerson, too, right? I feel like, mm -hmm. Johnny, if you've seen so far in spring, too, Bobby's been working with these guys. I've been wanting to mic up Bobby Dickerson for the last four weeks because <laughs> the way he talks to some of these guys and the relationship that he's built with this entire infield has been fantastic. I mean, him and Bryce have worked out in the morning starting at like 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every day in that little half field just working on Bryce's defense. And then you see him and the team work out at the, big, at the main stadium where it's, you know, the entire defense of Merrifield, Turner, Stott, Bryce, Bohm, Sosa, and he's constantly on them, you know, using that fungo bat and, and making these guys work. So I think that's a huge credit to Bobby Dickerson to see how this team has developed. Like John, you said, like even two years ago, 
it was arguably, you know, Alec Bohm had his struggles. It was arguably one of the worst defensive teams in all of baseball. And now Bobby Dickerson has returned and has turned this defensive team around. And I can't wait to see them turn into that. As well as remember that the bullpen was historically one of the worst. And now we've turned that around. The defense has turned around in a short period of time as well. Is it's mm. credit to all of them. Caleb Koff and Kevin Long's got the boys back and fantastically. Yeah, what a just from the players to the backroom staff to the front office, Preston Mattingly coming in, Dave Dombrowski, Sam Fold, you know, it's just what an organization transformation in just since what 2020 onwards has been has been really remarkable. And I can only see it going going up as well. I, I really can. Um, quick question from social media from Jay. Is there any Philly from the past you would slot into this year's roster? Who and why? For me, I would go with either Cole Hamels uh, into the rotation or Ryan Howard as a DH. Uh, John, what about what about yourself? Oh, I'm popping Mike Schmidt in there. Quick. Yeah. 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 I love Alec Boom, but uh, give me the greatest third baseman of all time. Throw him over there, Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt at, at third base, and man. <laughs> I'm excited about the current team, but you know, you, you <laughs> throw him in. No, oh, right, we, we we booked the parade. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Dave, your your choices are good too. I mean, imagine you just throw in Ryan Howard hitting 50 bombs, or or Cole Hamels uh, as one of those top three stars. Hey, it's it's hard to go wrong with with some of these choices, but uh, Mike Schmidt would be something different. Yeah, absolutely, Spencer. Speaking and speaking of that, I think you know. Do you think is is the pressure on Alec Bohm this season, guys? Is kind of going off that? Is is are we going to see Alec Bohm hit twenty five home runs, hit two sixty and above, maybe even two eighty and above? I think he's worked on his defense so much that now we could see him in that cleanup spot, right? There's a possibility that we could see him hitting four, but we could also see him hitting seven or eight. So I think I think the pressure's been on Alec Bohm, and it's kind of like that low key storyline that's been all spring, where you know it's kind of gone on the radar because the team's so good, but. I think there's going to be pressure on Alec Bowen if he doesn't perform at the plate this season. We'll see how that I, turns out. So I was having a conversation with someone uh, privately about, about Alec Bowman. Is it a big year for him? And maybe a make or break year? Like, because exactly. I think it, there's some good third basemen out there. And mm -hmm. if, if, but, and this is the, this is the windows now. Like, this is it. The World Series window, the, the players are in their prime. And I feel if Bohm isn't to where, we, we need him to be like an improvement on last year, hitting wise yeah, defensively. I think he's, he's really come a long way and I, I love Alec Bohm and I'll be gutted to see him move on. But the way we've seen the fields just cut Reese, like they're not afraid to make these big decisions. Right. And I feel this is the big year. I, mean, I think it is a bit make, make or break for Bohm this year. And I think if he's not up to the standard where the fields need him, I think, I think they'll cut him. They'll cut him or trade him for and flip him for somebody else. I, I I think this is a really, and I, I really want Bohm to to really do it. Like he's shown so much potential. Yeah, Bohm's a really interesting player. You know, you, you love what he brings you already, right? Like there's there's very few players in the lineup that I feel better about when they're say like a runner on third and less than two outs. That's really going to get the run home um, than than Alec Bohm. Um, you know, he's worked tirelessly on his defense. He used to hold his breath like any time a ground ball went towards him. That's not the case anymore. He, he's he's really uh, cleaned up the routine plays. Occasionally, you see him make spectacular plays. So this isn't a knock on Alec Bohm to no, say no, that no, he, no. yeah, that to say that he might be the one that if you're looking for someone, Dave, like you mentioned earlier, who's going to be a story this year? Who's going to take? Who's going to be the player that takes it to the next level? And just like you know, Bohm, you know, hitting hitting more bombs than he has in the past. Um, it, it's an area where they can still improve and again not a knock on bowman at all but if you look around the lineup around the field and say where can you where can you get some unexpected pluses you know a lot of these guys have have maxed out um you know you think maybe stott still who's already i think a star um might make a leap but it, but the other place maybe the main place you look is over at third base and yeah does does bow make a leap to be something even better than than what he is now um, and if not, I think you're right. I didn't, that's an area they start looking at that maybe, you know, as, as good as, as good as he is, if, uh, we fall short again and you want to get better in, in 2025, it, it's probably an area you look at, but that's, that's a 2025 problem. 
I'd, yeah, I'd say, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and how many? Uh, it, was, it was it was one of our RBI leaders last year. You know, we're not mm -hmm. saying Alec Bohm is. Uh, you know, it's no jibe on him at all. But I do think it is. At the same time, it is a bit of a make or break season. Like 110 RBIs this year. Like let's let's push it out. Let let's go. But I think he does need a bit more power. We need a bit more pop mm -hmm. from Alec. Um, but yeah, I, I I think he'll do it. I genuinely believe deep down. I, I think Alex got it in him, and I, I think he is gonna. The good thing is, like we said, there's other stars in this team to take the sort of mm -hmm. pressure and the main angle away from Alec Bohm at the moment. But yeah, as the season and, you, and out, you know, Bohm's going to put in the work, right? You saw how Hardy worked on the defense. He's he's a completely yeah. different player defensively. He's tough on himself sometimes, almost to a fault. It looks like, um, but you know he'll he'll be working. So if he may get there, he may not. But if uh, if he doesn't, it's not for for lack of effort. That's for sure. I can't even sure. think about breaking up the daycare with with Stott and Marsh and, and mm -hmm. Bone being split up. So no, Alec, come on, big big year for Alec, <laughs> big big year. Last question from Sam: uh, Who would throw the best first pitch at a Phillies game from the PHLY Sports crew? Um, and then oh, and a serious question: uh, But what's our confidence level in Sir Anthony having a bounce back year one to ten? Because Sam's a big Sir Anthony fan. So first of all, John, the PHLY Sports crew, who'd who'd throw the first? The best first pitch, and then we'll quickly get on to Sir Anthony before we wrap up. I can tell you it's not going to be as me, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I was going to have all the confidence in you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can give it a shot. You know, I think I can. I maybe got one more throw left in this arm. But, uh, yeah, I, I think I would go probably, you know, Jamie's my age. Renee is younger. She, she was an athlete. She is an athlete. Uh, Tyler's younger, too, but I, – I think I'll go. With, I think I'll go. With Renee, Renee Washington. She's uh, yeah. yeah. She's she's the athlete on the team. And, and and Spencer, Sir Anthony, again, quite a big year for Sir Anthony. Actually, we're saying make or break. He's now coming into this spring and this season fully healthy. I think we're hoping now this year. This is he's going to be the not lights out, but the real picture that, and and the, the the bullpen picture we really hope and know he can be. I think yeah, this is we need to see the consistent Sir Anthony, right? We we can't have the imbalanced Sir Anthony over the last two or three seasons that we've seen. I think, and my commonest level in Sir Anthony this year is that I think he could be your everyday closer come late July, early August, where he finally kind of steps up and asserts himself as that closer role as a Sir Anthony that we kind of saw towards the end of the season in 2022 and in the playoffs of 2022. Um, I talked to Bryce, you know, early in, in spring. He really, really liked what he saw. They, they faced each other in Bryce's first live BP session of the year, um, and he loved what Sir Anthony was throwing. His fastball command was great. The splitter was fantastic. So I'm excited for a big year of Sir Anthony. I just, we need it consistent. We need yeah. it to have, you know, we can't have the blowups in, in early June, July, that kind of thing. I think we need a consistent Sir Anthony where he comes out throwing his, his fastball where, you know, it, it's going to get blown right by him. Then, hopefully assert himself as the everyday closer as we get closer to playoff time. I think that's a great point. I, I think Sir Anthony, I have all the confidence in the world that he can handle it. But the, uh, again, to go back to it, the great thing is you've got all these candidates. And if you, if you look yeah. at the math of it and play the odds, one of them's going to emerge, whether it's Hoffman has a season like he did last year, Sir Anthony sort of recaptures his magic and is consistent. Kirkering, you know, who – sky's the limit with how good he can be yep. but if one of those yep. right-handers can sort of just secure and lock down the ninth inning role now you've got the rest of those right-handers and alvarado and and soto and soto yeah Trom, <laughs> then you've got all these guys that just and all you've got to do is cover the few innings between you know your your uh really good starters and your and your lockdown closer that puts you in a, that puts you in a great spot so yeah, hopefully Sir Anthony is is right there and can step up and claim the job. But you know, if it's not him, I I, I think you got a few guys. What a what a, I remember being there for yeah, was it 2017 or 18 for Ken Giles' debut for the Phillies when he threw 100 mile an hour and we were like, oh, the pitcher threw 100 mile an hour. 100 miles, an hour. yeah, yeah, he got and, a nickname out of now, it. Now they all do. And now they all do. Like every yeah, single yeah. one of them throw fire all the time again. Just just how far we've come. I know Giles did uh, ironically come out and strike out the side um, a couple of, <laughs> a few, a few days ago. Uh, that's how best baseball. That's, that's how it yeah. goes around. Um, John Spencer, thank you so much for your time and joining me again. It's been so much fun to 
sit down and talk Phillies. I've had all this in my head over spring, and it's nice to get it, get it all out there. Uh, John, where can we find you all over the social medias, buddy? Uh, find me mostly on Twitter. That's where I spend most of my time, at 2008 Phils, P-H-I-L-Z. Uh, 2008 fills and uh, you know catch me on PHLY uh, all PHL all PHLY sports um, all PHLY.com you know uh, usually getting something something written up there every day we've got live podcasts with with Jamie and Renee and Tyler um, yeah just find find uh, one of our outlets and uh, you'll you'll find everything you want in terms of uh, video streaming written content um Absolutely. we've got a big exciting team and uh we're ready ready to do some big things big year big year for you guys you know I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited i like the daily shows especially when i'm at work as well you're on right perfect time for me i can just stick you on during the day and and listen in and sort of get my get my phillies fix uh, at work yeah. uh, and spencer my man where can we find you buddy yeah sw mccurcher um all over social uh instagram we've been posting videos and stuff on there from the from the daily stuff here at spring training um, but also on Twitter. Um, yeah, and then then I kind of started making my debut on the Philly Stock Podcast. Yes, yeah. So that's been great with working with Corey and, and Ricky and Ruben and Ben. So we'll, we'll kind of have like a rotating analyst there from the three guys in the booth. Um, and then me and Corey, uh, hopefully twice a week here as the season progresses. So, yeah, man, thank you again, Dave. You're, this is awesome. Uh, it's been great to meet John down here. We've hung out a few times and seen each other around. So that's been so much fun. And, uh, man, looking forward to June, I'll tell you that. John, Spencer, thank you so much. That's a wrap. And we'll see you next week for the big preview show. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. It's been a blast. Guys, welcome.